long time. What have you been up to? Uh, just waiting for that, that phone call for my star turn where the limo shows up and I'm on a pilot show that is going to take off to great things. Absolutely, this is and, it. And then TJ calls up and says, This is it. Are you game? I said, I don't know what you're getting into, but <laughs> I'm going to say yes. <laughs> well, we've got a, a live studio audience over there. we got two dogs, so that's going to be the noise you hear which, in the background. Which, which, oh, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not the camera people. Yeah. Not the, the, the actual dogs I down there. thought those were pet terms maybe for... <laughs> <laughs> so this is a brand new show. It's called Servings, and you, appropriately, I mean, I don't think that we could find a better first guest. Guinea pig. Yes. First guest. First, Gu first guest, not guinea first, pig. First this, guest does, does, that sounds better. Yeah, first better guest. Than guinea pig. This is Steve Sacrificial Hoard. Sacrificial lamb. Yeah, sacrificial <laughs> lamb. This is Steve Hoard, and he is the director, executive director of the Boys and Girls Club. Thank you so much for being on our Thanks first episode. Thanks for having episode. me here, TJ. This Great. is an experiment. So, <laughs> what this is all about, it's called Servings, Kitchen with a Cause. And we're gonna have on uh, directors and uh, employees of different organizations and charities. And uh, instead of just sitting down and having one of those boring talking head interview type things, yeah, snoozers, we're going to interview while cooking. Hence the servings. And here's here's a cool part. Steve has no idea what we're cooking. None. Yeah. None. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make uh, dishes that sort of play off the name of the organization that they represent or their actual name. So in this case, let's see if you can figure it out. This is the beach towel of deception because it's covering all of the ingredients that we're going to be using today so i'm going to lift this up there are our ingredients what do you think and it has something to do with boys and I, girls club I've, I've, i'm thrown by a couple because and there are two dishes so okay that, that's where i'm thrown so there you go i'm gonna go with Boys and Girls Club Sandwich, maybe? Boom! He or... nailed it! <laughs> now, the second the second recipe has nothing to do with the Boys and Girls Club. It's uh, just something that will kind of go with the club sandwiches. Okay. Now, this isn't just normal club sandwiches. We're going to do a little bit gourmet. So, we're, we're not just going to do the basic. We're going to amp it up just a little bit. So, we're going to get reset, and we're going to cook that first recipe for you guys. So I prefer to do my bacon in the oven. It's a little cleaner. You don't have to mess with probably it. Probably why I don't prefer to do it. The, yeah. the more mess I can make, the <laughs> I feel like I've done something at that point. So I want your hands to stay clean. I'm gonna I'm gonna handle this okay. real quick. So what I do is so so far I'm doing a good job. You're here. doing great. With, with you supervise and you let me know if I'm doing anything wrong. Nope, that's definitely bacon and that's, that's definitely, definitely an oven that's an made oven. 400 degrees. Yep. I think we're on our way here. He can read. Yes. That's awesome. All right, so we got our bacon here, mm -hmm. and I have a sheet pan covered in aluminum, and then I have this grate on top okay. so that when the bacon cooks, it doesn't cook in its own Grease. juices okay. and get kind of nasty. It won't fry, it'll, it'll almost bake. All right, so as I'm doing this, Steve, tell us about the Boys and Girls Club. How long have you been there? Well, I've been uh, with Boys and Girls Clubs for 34 years now. Wow. But uh, 22 of that here in our wonderful Douglas County. And uh, we, uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Douglas County and, the, and I share the same anniversary of 1982 uh, that we've, uh, well, we can mark on. So it's been a great adventure. We've got a, a great mission centered around great kids that come through our doors throughout the years. And uh -huh. we serve more than 550 kids every year, wow. uh, ages 6 to 18. Um, and it's... Uh, we think we do some great things with our programs. Well, you guys are, uh, your name gets tossed around mostly in a good light. Mostly. Mostly. Uh, well, unless we, Sheriff Miller's talking about you, well, then I understand we got a that. problem. Yeah, that, that. Uh, <laughs> but um, 
that rarely happens. <laughs> but you are involved with just about everything. Um, you've got fundraisers going on all the time. You're always, you're just one of the pillars of the community. And I do have to say that Steve and I are actually the same height. We just, I'm on a, a uh, there's a step box stool. Yeah, to get a better look at the, the and table. Also, and also, it's, it's an optical illusion the way we have the camera yeah. set. I'm also 20 pounds lighter than what it right, appears to be. Right, But he is a pillar of the community, and you're, you know, you're just active, known you for years, always involved with everything. Yeah, so, well. And I know the kids appreciate you as well. So this is going to go in the oven for about 12 minutes. Get that set. And while that is cooking, what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to slice up some tomatoes and some lettuce and you let us know that tomatoes aren't your favorite well thing. that bit yeah yeah they're, but, they're not my favorite they're beautiful to look at and I need them for ketchup and marinara <laughs> yeah tomatoes have their purpose and some people yeah. don't like them just as tomatoes but, like but them they dress things. everything up no matter what even if you don't like them, nice color nice, nice yeah. color have you ever cut a tomato oh many times okay well then my I'm wife gonna, likes tomatoes so yeah I'm gonna hand you the tomato and the knife we just need slices we so just need we slices them on sandwiches and preferably not any finger so with slices I'm gonna go this way with sure. my tomato. We're yep. going to take off Yep, the here, ugly part. And we'll take off the rear end here. You take off some of my rear end, but that's another story. <laughs> so we want some healthy little Absolutely. slices here. Some bulk. So far, we get that knuckle yeah. in there. Yeah, I have learned that much over that's ever good. since the accident. As it's known. <laughs> As it's known. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do uh, one more. That way we know we have enough. Okay. I'll take care of those. I'm gonna get us. I'm gonna get us a trash bowl. I'm not gonna use the knife to cut these. I'm just gonna pull them off. This has already been washed. Okay. So we've got the leaves of the lettuce here. I'll pull off enough for a few sandwiches because we are gonna feed the crew as well. So we'll get this we, all we taken care of. We have to. It's in their contract. Oh, okay. They're doing manual labor, so mm. that should be they, enough they, right they there. They look like they're working hard. They look like they don't need to eat, though. I'm going to leave that one alone. Okay. All right. <laughs> I've got to get out of here still at some point. <laughs> you have to work with them. I do. I do. So I better keep my mouth shut. Now, the Boys and Girls Club has been in... The Hunter Park area for how long? Since 1998, okay. we, uh, and the, the club started and uh, originated in a, a back youth room slash scout room of First United Methodist Church here wow. in Douglasville, and as did the girls' club a year after that. Mm -hmm. So there were separate entities back going again back to 1982 and 1983 respectively, and then the early uh, 90s, uh, a national movement to bring the two Unified. organizations together. That um, we did, we, were, we were already serving a lot of girls, mm -hmm. auxiliary wise anyway. Right. You know, we got all these young, little sisters and big sisters yeah. of the boys, Hanging out. and it just seemed the most efficient way to, to the best way to do things for kids mm -hmm. and, and whole families. So, back to the '90s, and and we were at a uh, Timber Ridge Road over by the hospital for mm -hmm. many many years. After that, the church continued to serve as a as a uh, satellite site for summer programs because we just we never have we're able to serve everybody until right. we got our club. Nice. I, I still call it the new club, and it's hard to imagine. <laughs> Eighteen years old is the new club. It still uh, looks new. And, well, we, we're trying. We've got a, you know, the 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 people of this community, and and we have a volunteer board, mm -hmm. and it's hard to imagine that. They all have, for the most part, they have real jobs and real lives. Right. But they put as many hours into mm. this is their their real job, right. uh, the passion. But and we 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 talked about other uh, organizations that are going to be you know featured on this wonderful new show to uh, to highlight them and what the good things they do in the community mm -hmm. because which is great. There's so much overlap. Right. The, not right. just United Way organizations, but all the way across this county, which why, why I love it so much. Mm -hmm. um, if you're on our board of directors, again, a volunteer board, these folks, uh, we, we've got a founding father on that board mm -hmm. uh, in Jimmy Handel, uh, and we've got others that have been on the, the 
board for seven, 10, 12 years mm -hmm. to show continuity yeah. and, and, and commitment right. more than anything. Uh, and you're not there if it doesn't mean something. Right. And I feed off of them, and, and I think they feed largely off of our kids and the mm -hmm. success that we have in, in the way of educational opportunities, in the way of leadership opportunities, mm -hmm. and certainly the way of character and leadership development mm -hmm. uh, for our kids. And, uh, and keeping them healthy. This is one of our core values right here is, is uh, our pillars, healthy lifestyles. Uh -huh. And it's not just about are you running and are you exercising, and, right. but are, are you eating right? Can you eat better? Mm -hmm. uh, are, are you doing what you need to take care of yourself up here right. as well? Right. And uh, you know, adjusting to all the things around you. But, yeah, we, we did a show a while back with some of your uh, kids and the Junior League. Oh, that, that so we filmed our down chefs at, in the kitchen. Yes, we that filmed was down at uh, Burke's Grill, and uh, they let us use their kitchen, and we taught them some things, and I, they taught us some you, things, too. You mentioned too. The, the Junior League, and that's the type of thing I'm talking about, that you yeah. get you, people that are given their time, mm -hmm. and to come be with kids, and to give us a different flavor right. yep. of <laughs> what's, what's going on at the club, that it's not just homework and tutorial and basketball and right and they're not running. just playing they're, and we're certainly not you could think what you want we're not babysitters right we're not daycare and there's nothing wrong with babysitting or we we are much more than that. we're, we're right. there to grow kids that's plain awesome. and simple that's awesome well you're you've always been the biggest cheerleader for the group and you do a great job uh, and i'm not just saying that because you're on the show i've said it behind your back that, <laughs> so that proves it a lot of things behind my back <laughs> yeah. to get back to me but that's <laughs> All right, so to go on these club sandwiches, we are making two different mayonnaises, mayonnaises. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of mayonnaise, but if it's on a sandwich and it's kind of a little more gourmet mm -hmm. like we're doing, okay. then I can, I can take it. So I'm going to do uh, a half cup in two bowls. And I'm going to put you to work here in just yeah, a second. Yeah, I'm, I'm so. lost in the whole gourmet thing. If Mayonnaise, Miracle Whip, I don't know how you get by without a sandwich, or certainly without a BLTs and club sandwiches without it. But. All right, so we're gonna have a lot of mayonnaise, but that's okay. Okay. All right, and I wanna give a shout out to Randy Weaver and his lovely wife, when I was shopping, they, they recommended this particular mayonnaise. I don't, I don't yeah. like I said, I was lost. I didn't know which one to the get. The Bama brand? Yeah, they said right. it's pretty good, I don't know. Uh, one of these mayonnaises is going to be a horseradish mayo, and one is going to be a honey mustard mayo. Honey mustard. Honey mustard. All right, so we'll do the horseradish first. So we got the mayo, we need three tablespoons of horseradish, a half a teaspoon of thyme and salt and pepper. So let's break open the, you got the horseradish over there. I've I'll got the horseradish over here. Hello, horseradish. And it needs three of these. Three of there. those. I'll let you pick the bowl. I'm gonna start working on the other one. Here's the thyme and you're gonna need a half a teaspoon, which is this one for the thyme. Okay. And then a little salt. And okay. What am I scooping this out with? Because that's probably uh, not going to. Just use this. Okay. Well, that's why I want to check with you, boss. Yeah, Ad lib. Okay. You know. All right. There's so, no. There's no science. Because I to want. This. I want. It's three art. of three of these. Three of those. Three of those. Yes. Oh, this... All right. So I'm going to start on the other one. Half cup mayo. We're going to do some lime. So I'm going to get and that. We're going to go here with mine. Yeah. You can. Yes. Use that one. Yep. Okay. That'll work. One. So I'm gonna cut this lime open. Math is very important. Squeeze a good portion of lime in there. Uh, that's about a tablespoon, half a lime. And we'll do a tablespoon of honey. He's got the horseradish in, I can tell. Yeah, I'm trying to get it sealed up as quickly as possible. <laughs> we wanna keep it fresh. We don't want to kill the dogs. All right, tablespoon of honey. Look at that. Yeah, reach That's over a here and do a rinse off here. Tablespoon of honey is in. We need a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, which makes the other half of the honey Dijon mayonnaise. A 
I'm gonna be real scientific here. That's a tablespoon. That looked like a tablespoon. All where, right. Where are we at on the time? Two minutes. <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> Shows Great. at eight and 10 every night. Don't wow. miss it on weekends, folks. <laughs> be sure to tip your waitress. He's okay. a funny guy. If it doesn't come out right off the bat, then you want to check underneath the cap and make sure that the protective seal is removed. Yeah. Always expedites getting out your spice. And something we're also gonna need is some toasted bread. So while you're finishing that up, I'll throw some bread in the toaster. We've got the uh, in-store baked bread. Nice and fresh. You gotta have the white bread for a club sandwich. How much time? Uh, uh, or, or. Half a teaspoon, just one of those. One of those. Yep. That is fantastic. There so accurate. And as you're mixing that up. I'm mixing it up. The last ingredient that you have not seen yet is the turkey breast, okay? It calls, this recipe calls for smoked turkey breast. So what I did, sounds like the bacon's almost ready. What I did was, as you can see, I did some footage on my cell phone. I brined the turkey breast and then I smoked it this morning. So it came off the, the grill probably about 30 minutes ago. So it is fresh. We gotta slice it up, throw it on the sandwiches. That looks fantastic. Now you like mayonnaise, so do you wanna taste it? No. <laughs> because what I do not like is horseradish. <laughs> ah, I love horseradish, so that's gonna be that's, mine. That's why you make... You wanna taste this one? Oh, sure. What was in that one? Uh, that was, oh, that was honey, the... Uh, honey Dijon mustard. No, you can't go wrong with that. Lime juice. Let me go a little right there. It's gonna be very tiny. Whoa! Is it palatable? Um, Yes, that's a, uh, that's different. <laughs> we are reset, ready to put these things together. We got the beautiful smoked turkey right here. The bacon's ready. You gotta, gotta go. You gotta, gotta go. Bring home the bacon. And you knew you had to get that out. Yep. Bring, bring home the bacon. Bring Didn't you really home. say that? We did. We did. Okay. I've only said it about six times, right? <laughs> In prepping for it, even. Yeah. I got the line right. Well, this looks like bacon worth bringing home, though. Yes. This is this is a different way to prepare for a lot of us too, rather than just in the skillet or uh, for many more of us just open up that microwave door and zap <laughs> it. But you lose a lot. Yeah. This this maintains a lot of the original shape and size. Mm. We're ready to uh, put these together. I guess I should uh, slice off a couple slices from the uh, turkey. The turkey. Well, unless you can do the that Fred looks, Flintstone sandwich, and yeah. then it's fine the way it is. I'm gonna try to do it or, this or way. Or for Matthew, well, he no, we're just we're one big, okay. Yeah, he just puts it on a stick. <laughs> All right, here we go. That looks oh, nice. Oh, that did nice. You know what? You want a piece? Oh, look at the juices mm. shooting out of that hand. Mmm, that's good turkey. Mm. I may be making that for Thanksgiving. Mmm, that is good. Cook. I definitely need an electric knife, though. I think you're doing fine right there. That came out so good. That that looks and tastes not not much different than some of the deep fried turkeys I've had, and those are yeah. Tremendous. That that is the way to go. Yeah. Deep fried turkey. All right. So we'll do one of each. One with the horseradish mayonnaise and one with the honey Dijon mayonnaise. So I'll give you a piece of bread, and I got a piece of bread. Assembly time. Yes. You, you, you keep surprising me. I you do have the most critical really part 
of the Boys and Girls Club Sandwich. That's right. If you There's don't two. have the toothpicks, and these these are the pretty toothpicks. You just can't get these any, well, actually, these I think are, you can get you these can anywhere. Get them anywhere. Yeah, okay. These are called frilled. I'm thrilled that we were able to get these. Let's, let's get this guy up there. There it is. How does he look? Oh, that looks great. Oh, yeah. Super zesty. Can we get... Ah! I think it's time to take a taste. Oh, I'm surprised you, you had to wait that long. You want to take your tomato off? I'm, or you I'm, just going to find You know what? Most importantly, I'm going to take my toothpick out. That is a safety and, precaution right there. And, we don't want to eat it. Okay. Ready? Look over there. What is that? Time lapse. Okay, time. we're ready. Okay, we're back now. Three, three <laughs> two, one. Mm -hmm. Oh man, we made this. Mm -hmm. You did good, DJ. Woo! Mmm. I'd eat that again. Mmm. Oh, I am eating it. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> the horseradish mayonnaise is amazing on there. It's just enough. Just enough. How's your mayonnaise? This, uh, I would not have believed that uh, I would enjoy something any more than my basic mayonnaise. This is this is good. So you can take that and put it in your oh, arsenal. Oh, you've got some, absolutely. We've got something to add to it. But uh, that's just good. Awesome. That's just really zesty. It's popping. Now, mm. while he's finishing his sandwich, we're gonna clean up a little bit, get ready for the next recipe. That is sweet potato homemade chips and regular potato chips. We're gonna do them right here in my kitchen. Mm, in the kitchen. So the Boys and Girls Club Sandwiches, success. The next one we're gonna do here, the last one actually, is the homemade potato chips. You, gotta, you gotta have sides to go with you your You gotta club. have sides. Yeah. So we've got the sweet potato and a regular potato. Now, this is going to be an experiment because I don't have a mandolin to cut, shave them, you know, really thin. I've got the food processor here, but the opening is, uh, you know, kind of small. We might need to help out the potatoes to start yeah. out with then, huh? And I've never used this this adapter, whatever you call it, this uh, cutter before. So this is going to be an experiment. We could we could test Matthew's knuckles. Yeah. Fingers. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe later. <laughs> Matthew's voting no. He says okay. no. no. All right. So what we'll do is is um, I will do the regular potato, and then we'll empty it. Get it ready, and, then, and, and I'll let you do that okay. one. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of guess. I'm gonna cut it this way. All right. Here we go. I need the pusher. Well, I was gonna. You want something capped over that? Oh! Oh! Look at that! What's wrong with that? That's wonderful. That was easy. You know, I'm not normally amazed by potato slicing, <laughs> but. Well, that's half. Wow. Seemed to go pretty well. I, I am actually geeked up about your pair of slices there. <laughs> See if we'll do it all by itself. He's gonna... Yeah, yeah not not the last part, <laughs> not so much. It's gonna be more like minced potato. See, you're gonna be doing all this in just a second. So don't get too comfortable. I get to shove stuff into sharp moving objects, yes! It's just like the time I got Darren, my brother, to check into the lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. These are, some of them, this is why I would prefer a mandolin, because some of them uh, are, are pretty thin and yeah. some of them are not. So they're a little inconsistent, which means they'll cook differently. Okay. But the majority of them are, that's a pretty good size. Yeah. We can, can work with that. The paper towel, you're trying to get some of the moisture wicked yes. off of these guys because yes. the drier the better, I guess? Yes, they will. They'll cook much better. They won't be as crispy uh, as regular potato chips unless you get them really, really dry. Mm -hmm. And one way people do that is to put them in the oven oh, uh, okay. on lower heat and actually dry them out that way. All right, so. If you want to cut that in half, I'm cut that in half. I will put this back together. Here's the pusher. I think I've forgotten how 
much denser sweet potatoes yeah, are they're, they're a little more difficult to cut please okay. do not cut yourself over. there you go we're gonna yes. go over the top here the spine of the knife oh there we go there we go there we go we, think, right. we think that'll work we'll shift. i believe in you there's a button here the one that says on that's the one in the that's middle that's the one whoa yeah you would never know how dense it was from that. No. Well, rock and roll. Awesome. We have sweet potato sliced. Sweet taters and, and regular taters. So you can just pour those out right oh, on top I'm of there. I'm going to figure out how to get the lid. Uh-huh. <laughs> Let me handle all that. And then that will go the same way. We'll turn it. Yes. Now, when, he, when he tells me that you have to turn it. I like to let him figure it out. <laughs> those look good. And those are going to be drier just because sweet potatoes are not as moist as a regular potato. They don't have as much water content. We want it all out of there, though. Yes. Come on, sweet potatoes. All right. If you will, grab a couple more paper towels. I can do that. To put on top of those. I and can I will do get that. this out of the way. Now, Steve, do you guys do any fundraising? I mean, you need oh, you need money all the time see, to run that thing. Not for profit. No. Um, yeah. Hmm. So yeah. Yeah, much. we uh, we've got some some great great United Way uh, providers, mm -hmm. um, but as a as a as a unit agency for the United Way umbrella, uh, that's maybe forty percent of our budget, which is yeah a good amount, obviously. Yeah. But the rest of it's made up through, you know, with our, our, our volunteer board again, mm -hmm. that's out there hustling for, you know, to make ends meet on what really is a half million dollar budget each and every year to keep our doors open to serve those 550, 600 kids that we have coming through. Right. And it's a year round program, you know, from, you know, it's not just after school, which it is during the school years, but we've got holidays coming up. We're open 7.30 to 6 on those fall break holidays. Mm -hmm. Spring breaks, winter breaks, we're open all day on those days. Uh, summertime, eight-week program, 7:30 to six, throughout the yeah. day. It's it's a it's a long schedule. It's a lot of mm -hmm. hours, and the most important resource uh, that we have to provide is the right staff. Right. Um, and that's that's a good amount of that, obviously. But then the resources for our kids that everything from their books to the technology to their mm -hmm. arts needs to their physical education needs. To have a club that, that you walk into and you feel good about in your environment, it mm -hmm. does take it takes a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a, a good bit of fundraising that goes on, and we just finished up a, a very successful um, shout out to to, uh, to to Mike and Mike Stevens and Tracy Ivy for leading and chairing our our uh, our uh, event at Fox Hall a mm -hmm. few weeks ago, our clay shoot event. We had our fifth annual clay shoot event, very successful. Uh, we also have a golf tournament every June out at Chapel Hill and, uh, and uh, other, other events that, that folks can certainly, whether you play golf or, or, or want to shoot skeet, you can come out with us, but there are all sorts of ways to give back and make a difference, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a pledge online or to make right. a phone call. So if you're not uh, a golfer, not a shooter, you can just go. Oh, oh absolutely. Just you know, log in uh, to bgcma.org. That's us, Boys, Girls, Clubs, Metro Atlanta org. You can learn more about us at the website. You can get the most important promotional material of all, our kids' faces, mm -hmm. and uh, to see you know, firsthand what, what we're about and what they get out of the clubs. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can certainly you know, give us a shout. That's awesome. And of course, the, the club number, 770-577-9824. If you just uh, want to call just and want talk to, call, to Steve, you know, just, just go, if you want to, If you want to volunteer, give us a call or log on to the website. Uh, there's lots of ways to make a difference at the Boys and Girls Club. And, you know, it's, it's an all hands on deck. And yeah. I know it's been cliched over and over again, uh, but it, it does take a village. It does. And uh, we've got the right village here in Douglas right. County, we, and we appreciate it. So we've got the, the fundraisers, we've got the staff, we've got the amazing board that you have. Amazing board. We've got other community support going on. And uh, uh, again, got... if you want to get involved, give them a call, log on, and do something for these kids. Because it's not for Steve. No, it's, uh, Steve it's definitely not for Steve. Steve doesn't any of that. No, I, I don't. No. It's, it's for it's the kids. In spite of Steve. <laughs> in spite of Steve. 
All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use one of these pans for the sweet potatoes. So we're not gonna mix these guys all together? We're not, I just came up with a great I idea. Bet we could though. We could, you could, absolutely could, uh, but I've got a great idea for the potatoes. You've got the more potatoes. great ideas? I absolutely. I thought the slicer was the, the best idea well, so far. it just gets better. And the only better idea was that we did not or add horseradish <laughs> when we were doing that. Or tomatoes. Or, or tomatoes. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil here. I was wondering where that came in. And this is going to crisp them up. So okay. we're gonna mix that up a little bit with our freshly washed hands. And you as well. We love to pet the dogs in between takes, so we make sure we wash our hands or pull the dogs off of each other is more like it. Well. They and love I, to fight. I think I might have touched one of the camera crew too. That, that's true. true. That's that's <laughs> probably more of an issue. Yeah, that's yeah. Come to think of it. All right, so these are going to be our sweet potatoes going in. Put those over here. You recognize these because they're orange. Yes. <laughs> you can't trick me. No. All right, I cooked the rest of our bacon that oh, we had bacon left bacon potatoes. Over. This this is our. Uh, that's going to be our um, our peace offering. To the so, camera crew. Oh, I, I was going to say this is this is definitely a Matthew influence time. with the yes. bacon. That's he, not nearly enough bacon to suit him, though. You know no. that. So we've got the pan that we used to cook the bacon. Okay. And it doesn't have a lot of bacon grease, but it's but got gonna, some. But it's got some of that bacon flavor it's already in it. It's got it baked in. So okay. we're going to use that for gonna, the regular potatoes. We're going to start shoveling these guys you, in. Absolutely. That's not too hot, is it? Yeah, that looks I think I washed my hands after I touched Matthew. <laughs> okay, that, that's taking too long. Yes. Let's go with that that mode Perfect. of efficacy. Perfect. That fancy word for efficiency, is that yeah. efficacy word. So Get you guys slather around in. Looking, oh, we yeah, want you in the, some decent you in amount the of bacon, bacon grease. Oh, I'm though. feeling that. Oh, man. And we got our towels here. We can wash our hands. Well, we can. But or you can lick them if you yeah. want. I mean, it's cooked bacon. So it's, it's not gonna hurt you. So we've got the oven on 400. These are gonna go in there for about 20, 25 minutes. We'll check on them, make sure they're crisp up. Awesome. awesome. Okay, yours look so much better than mine. And I'm gonna explain why mine don't look that great. Hello. See, we don't fake it. If we mess up, we mess up. Do we have to admit we messed up? Some of these are great. We, we, by we, I mean. Yeah, it was me. Some of these are fantastic. That looks great right there. You see that? It's really hot. Ah, ah. Well, I'm not gonna pick But then up. you've got some like this. This is much thinner than the other one. So it cooked a lot faster. That's the downside of using a food processor versus a mandolin. Mandolin is going to slice very consistently every time. Plus you cut these. Well, and for so. the, these servings, we certainly could have used the knife. Yeah. But, oh, did he, get, did he really do that? I did. He did do that. I just did that. Did I not do what he asked me to do? Here's the bus. He set me up for the charbroiled. Right Okay, under. fine, fine. But I'm gonna still eat the good ones, right? You, these look great. These look fantastic. Some of them are, you know, not as crisp as the others, mm -hmm. but they're still gonna be good. Now, to season them, this, this is in bacon grease, so I'm gonna let you just do a couple pinches of salt, Pinch a little salt. pepper, and a little lime. And then over here on mine, I'm gonna do some salt. And we're seasoning after they cook because they've got that, that oil still kinda, you know, bubbling and, and it's ready to absorb some seasoning. All right, now with this, you have to grind it. Oh. <laughs> how, how much more of this segment do we have I just he wanna, gets to do this to I me? just wanna see you try I, it first. I heard it coming out. That's all I was going by was the sound. Just wasn't, you know, making that, yeah, okay. Fine. You gotta do it really hard to make it come out like that. All right, and a little, <laughs> are you gonna slap me with that? Is that what's happening here? I just here? don't wanna leave any fingerprints on the evidence, <laughs> that's, that's all, that's. Whoa, 
We're friends. We're friends. Sure, we'll right. still be friends. So squeeze we'll just be a closer in height, but <laughs> okay. squeeze a little lime on squeeze there. Squeeze a little squeeze a little lime. Yes. Now what I'm doing to the sweet potatoes is I have a homemade rub here. It is about half brown sugar, half salt. You better got, not tune there's another way to squeeze a lime. I'll be really upset. <laughs> That's completely wrong. <laughs> we also have paprika, <laughs> onion powder, garlic powder, cumin and a little red pepper. It's, it's more of a salty sweet than it is a spicy. And this is actually the same rub that I used for the turkey, for the Boys and Girls Club sandwiches. The turkey is what made those sandwiches. All right. The now, turkey on the grill. Yeah. Real grilled turkey. Fan of the turkey. Not out of the deli that says grilled on the wrapper. It was a grilled yeah, turkey at 7 o'clock this morning. Okay. It that, was really good turkey. I feel sorry for that lime. Yeah, well, you just but, mangled you cannot, it. What you can't tell me is it wasn't squeezed. It, it was squeezed. Better this than you, right? It has <laughs> no, that is dehydrated now. That is no juice left. Was, All right, so we're good. We've got these seasoned, flavored, ready to roll. We have a lot less of these to eat. But um, I'm going to take yeah, a those, taste. Those are at a premium. That's really good. I'm going to taste one of yours, too. When I'm going to taste it, I know this is better. <laughs> Here's a crispy one. Mm. Wow. It's good stuff. That is really good. This is, this is, I did not know this before the morning, but this is going to be a great compliment to our Super Boys and Girls Club sandwich. Yes. Mm. Now, I was actually a member of the boys club when I was a kid, when it was over off of Timber Ridge. At Timber Ridge. Yep. And I went to uh, the camp. Camp Kiwanis. Yep. Camp Kiwanis. Up at Alatoona, I which guess is, it was. Which is where I started at, TJ. That's, that's in 1982, fall wow. of 82. I was finishing up a, a college internship mm -hmm. um, to West Georgia. and. Um, Mike Miller was our camp director, and and I was the. We had just reopened camp after years hiatus back in '82, and mm -hmm. that's where it all started. And there's a lot of story that goes behind that story. That how do you go from there to a 30, you know, four year career in the clubs? But it's been a great ride. It's still fun, and the, the kids make it that way. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, you're right that's where great. you need to be. I did be. not know. How do I yeah. not know that story before now? Yep. So I had a lot of fun. Oh, that was good. And I've had a lot of fun today on I've our first blast. episode of Servings Kitchen with a Cause. Uh, thank you so thank you much so for much, being on here. Appreciate you. Great GCTV. first guest. Just it's downhill from here. The guinea pig. I'm sure. 